Hey, Halloween night is always a little bit spookier with a full moon like the one you'll see over Charlottesville tonight. We'll find out if that leads to an unpredictable evening as the Tar Heels and Cavaliers mix it up and who gets the treat. We welcome you to ACC Network Football, presented by GEICO. Number 15, North Carolina, taking on Virginia in the 125th edition of the South's oldest rivalry from Scott Stadium here in Charlottesville, Virginia. Dave O'Brien alongside my partner, Tim Hasselbeck. Actually, that's not technically true. I'm in New England. Tim is home in Nashville, and Katie George is on site at Virginia. And after a tremendous freshman year, Sam Howell has been excellent as a sophomore for Carolina. In fact, over the last three games, seven touchdown passes. Four of those have gone for 30 yards or more. That's a big red flag, Tim, for Virginia's secondary coming into play tonight. It is. They, they have a quick strike offense in large part because of that quarterback, Sam Howell. But, Dave, make no mistake about it. This Tar Heel offense wants to run through their running game, and it's because they probably have the best running back duo in all of college football. Michael Carter, their leading rusher, he's the guy they want out in space. He's their speed back, so dangerous in the open field. And then they have their hammer, Javante Williams. He's the power back. Very rarely does the first tackler get him down. He's looking to punish you. These guys are tremendous. They share the backfield nearly equally. Both of them over 550 yards rushing apiece so far this season. However, that does mean tonight is a battle of strength against strength because Virginia under head coach Bronco Mendenhall, they are very tough against the run. They are good against the run. Their front is the strength of their defense so far this season. Giving up just 3.3 yards per carry and it's in large part because of these linebackers Charles Snowden in the middle there all six foot seven of him covers so much ground Zane Zandier is a run and hit guy he's all over the field and Nick Jackson has been described as their best defensive player they have a big challenge in front of them but they've been up to the task so far this season uh, we'll find out if the Cavaliers defense is ready for Carter and Williams and for more on that let's go to Katie in Charlottesville well, Charles Snowden told me preparing to play against North Carolina is like preparing to play against thunder and lightning. Javante Williams brings the thunder. He's so physical and he has this innate ability to make defenders miss. While Michael Carter, he brings the lightning. He has incredible speed, which makes him hard to catch when in space. And Tim, to your point, Snowden says if you look past our record, you'll see we've had success up front, holding opponents to 133 yards rushing through five games. So they have confidence but they know tonight is a tall task and it just got taller. Guys, starting defensive end Richard Burney is unavailable tonight due to a medical issue, non-COVID related. All right, Katie, thank you very much. As we get underway, North Carolina will have the first possession here as Virginia kicks off through the end zone. And so that means Sam Howell have his hands on the football to get this thing going. He's lost about 10 pounds from a year ago. He's more flexible. He's not a running machine, Tim, but he can do a lot more things with that flexibility. Yeah, he's played better outside the pocket. And you look at what he did a year ago. So many big plays in the passing game. He's been tremendous in the fourth quarter, which very rarely happens with a young quarterback. But that's been kind of the hallmark of his game is when it gets late, he plays some of his best football. We don't want to jinx him by putting that graphic up there. He has not thrown a pick in the fourth quarter in his career as the Carolina quarterback. And on the first carry, it'll be Carter trying off the left side for two on the first play from scrimmage. Carolina coming in with a record of four and one, fresh off a rivalry win over NC State last Saturday, 48 to 21. They really got the offense going. Mac Brown says they're probably, or at least they were at that time, a little bit overrated. Right now, number 15 coming into this one tonight in the ACC. And it's Carter again with the second carry. He's very much the leader of this team. He picks up four here. He is constant energy, always bringing up his teammates. But here they go. He will step off. And, of course, Javante Williams to step in. 
And some of these known passing situations have been a bit of a struggle for North Carolina this year. Much better in the RPO game. Back to throw. Pressure on him. He eludes a tackler and he fires this one complete. He got it to Walston, the tight end. That's not a play they use often, but they can do it effectively. Yeah, and this is really well done by Sam Howell. You see the blitz come. Jackson gets through clean, but that's just great strength in the pocket by Sam Howell. He's able to rip through the contact and then find Walston, who's running a shallow cross right into his line of vision. 16-yard gain. He's going to go deep right away here. He's got a wide receiver open, and he's going to get into the end zone for a touchdown. That one caught by Deami Brown for 54 yards. You talk about a quick strike. Quick strike is right, Dave. It's what they really did well last year with Diami Brown. So much speed, does a nice job of fielding the high snap. Looks to his right, it moves the safety, and Diami Brown just uses his speed to run right past Devontae Cross in a beautifully thrown deep ball by Sam Howell. That thing was thrown about 55 yards in the air to get a sense of Sam Howell's arm strength. That was launched. Well, he had a career game talking about Brown last year in this game as he caught over 200 yards worth the passes, and that is an immediate score immediately on the board for North Carolina. That did not take long at all. They were talking about Sam Howell and the deep ball ability. We mentioned that, the string of touchdown passes. Last year against Virginia, he threw four touchdown passes, 353 yards, and he's at it again in very quick fashion. We know he has the ability to do it. You saw them get that first down, quickly snap the football, take a shot down the field. That's what these guys do. I mean, you talk about big plays uh, and the ability to, to push the ball down the field. It's kind of been the best way to describe North Carolina's offense under Phil Longo and I will tell you it's been a little bit interesting because they haven't you know they haven't had the big plays down the field to Danny Brown this year because of so many last year but come away with one early in this game. Now Kelly takes a knee down there in the end zone so they'll bring it out and that means Brennan Armstrong back at quarterback returning to start last Saturday night in Miami after missing a game and a half to the concussion protocols actually played pretty darn well he looked like he wasn't having any issue with the concussion whatsoever and he ran the ball so effectively yeah, and I think that's probably what he does best at this stage of his career Dave kind of a, a gritty tough runner is how I would describe him in the passing game he can make all the throws he has kind of gotten himself into trouble with some poor decisions in a few of his starts and he's got his fine tight end in motion there, Paul Jan, who made one of the great catches in the conference last week. A quick strike here to Kemp, who's been his number one target. He's been sensational, really. That goes for 17 yards. That's his 42nd catch already this season, Tim. Yeah, sensational is a pretty good way to describe what Billy Kemp has done. Just kind of finds his way to the football and good run after the catch player as well. I'm sorry, he's going to run it here. He'll test those legs right away before he is dragged down. Get used to seeing that tonight. He went for 91 last weekend. He picks up three here. And that's the kind of runner he is. It, you know, he's a good designed runner, but he also makes a lot of plays on design passing, uh, you know, plays where he just takes off as a scrambler. And it's one of the things that the North Carolina, North Carolina linebacking crew has to be aware of tonight. Second down and six, Thompson in motion. He took a look at him, Armstrong tripped up and down he goes. Another carry for the quarterback and a three yard game for Brennan Armstrong, the sophomore from Shelby, Ohio. You see here, this here, you know, you're always trying to protect your quarterback, but the style of runner Brennan Armstrong is, he's kind of more of a Tim Tebow style runner where He's okay with the contact, and sometimes I think he's looking for it, but obviously, Dave, you mentioned the concussion earlier this season. It does have to be something you're concerned about in terms of protecting him. Going to keep it on the ground on this carry. 
And Keaton Thompson will gain two. And so get used to this. Have you not seen Virginia? Have you not seen him to this point? You'll see a different quarterback in and different guys running the football from time to time. Yeah, and that obviously a bit of a gadget play where it's kind of a surprise quarterback sneak with Thompson. I love the idea. I love the play call. Just on third and three, it's hard to get three yards on a quarterback sneak, which now puts you in a fourth and one scenario. So fourth down and one. And the handoff. And again, staying on the ground to pick up that yard. It's Talapapa. And Virginia, well, they say they have that first down. And a stop by Trey Morrison on the tackle. And they will pick up the one yard. Just got it on the carry for first down. That's good hard running by Talapapa because it was not really well blocked. And I think Bronco Mendenhall just gave us a signal there that, look, against this North Carolina team, they're going to have to take chances. Fourth and one basically at midfield. They're going to go for it, trying to find ways to extend their possessions. First and ten for Armstrong. He's going to hand off for Thompson. Nice hole there. He finds it. Good blocking in front of him before he is taken down, but a really fine carry for a 14-yard pickup for Keaton Thompson. And you can just tell that they are scripting stuff for, for Keaton Thompson. They've identified him as really one of their better athletes and as they're looking for more explosive plays offensively 99 is the guy that can make that happen transfer from mississippi state he will also get some catches tonight in all likelihood because he lines up as a wide receiver and doing it right here out on the left side armstrong again on the carry cutting back inside showing good mobility here he picks up seven on that carry Just help but think, Dave. You know, this is the coaching staff that was at BYU that had Taysom Hill, who's now with the New Orleans Saints. Kind of a jack of all trades, if you will. You know, play tight end, or play receiver, or play running back, and seems like they've kind of adapted this offense in that same idea. Armstrong by himself in the backfield and back to throw and fires this one and going to be. Incomplete on the sideline. Intended for Henry. We expect him to get some catches. Seeing them last week, they didn't go to him. But now all of a sudden, he's in the mix with Lavelle Davis out for the second straight week. That's a great point, Dave, because with no Lavelle Davis, they've struggled throwing the ball outside the hash marks, especially outside the numbers. And, you know, He's open there. He's just, you know, Sean Henry's got to make that catch because the ball's on the money. Third and four, and on a handoff to Alapapa straight ahead. Now, you're going to hear us refer to a player who's not in this game probably more than once, and a very talented freshman, Lavelle Davison. Tim, there's really very few like him at 6'7", with his pass-catching ability, the great hands, the speed, the leaping ability. This is a giant miss for Virginia. It it's a huge miss, Dave, and, you know, very rarely do you say that about a true freshman wide receiver that, you know, maybe didn't have huge expectations coming into the season, but they've missed him big time. He's going to scamper again, and a nice hole opens up for Armstrong. Across the 10, he dives, he gets the pylon, and a touchdown. 23 yards for the touchdown run for Brennan Armstrong, and a very quick answer for the Cavaliers. one of these plays that you need to Virginia's offense. It really looks like a pass, but it essentially, you know, it turns into a quarterback draw. As Shane Simpson kind of leads up and is a blocker, and the offensive line decides to rally around their quarterback as well. He's looking to his right, doesn't like what he sees, and just look at what happens. You know, Chris Glazier starts getting down the field, and it basically is a quarterback draw for your talented runner at the quarterback position. So Delaney on for the extra point and that one is going to clang off of the upright he didn't get it so they settled for the six virginia with 58 rushing yards on that drive tim you mentioned it right away this might be the trend of the night armstrong all the way to the end zone
Well, speaking of their offenses, Mac Brown and Rocco Mendenhall have to be delighted with the start in this one. The way they're moving the football, a terrific run there by Brennan Armstrong as he goes in from 23 yards, the quarterback scamper. Virginia missing the extra point, so Carolina on top by a point. And here's Carter. And they will bring it out. Well, last time they had the football, Carolina didn't have it very long, but they love the result, Tim. They sure do, because they're working a double move to the top of the screen to Downey Brown. Just look at the little stutter go that he runs. A little stutter there, and then just straight speed past Devontae Cross. And, you know, good job of Sam Howell getting that football out of there after fielding a high snap. But that is this quick strike North Carolina offense. They have the ability to do this, and you pair that with what we know is a tremendous run game. It's why they are hard to defend. They move the football 75 yards in 85 seconds in the opening drive. I will throw short, and they found him very quickly. Carter trying to get free, and eventually taken down and lost six yards, and a good job by Noah Taylor, who has two and a half sacks this season, a junior playing really well. Yeah, and it's a really good job. It, this is basically a sweep to Carter. They let one of the ball on the perimeter, but if you can bleep, beat the wide receiver's blocks like Taylor does there, obviously puts North Carolina behind schedule. Now back to throw. Second down is 17 and complete to Brown, who is dragged out of bounds. Now if you saw it earlier today, number one Clemson just survived the upset bid by Boston College, 34 to 28. Trevor Lawrence missing that game. Davo Sweeney came out after the game and said he will also miss the Notre Dame game next week. A little bobble there by Howe, but they're going to get the playoff. And here comes Carter. Carter cutting to the sideline. And a huge gain as he steps out. Off to a great start. He has 38 on that carry. Yeah, and you just see the movement they get up front here, Dave. Basically a zone run. Everybody's going to be moving to the left. And then Carter just does a nice job of pressing the hole and then getting upfield. That's surprising against a Virginia defense that's been so good defending the run so far this season. So the heels quickly on the move again. First down and 10. And a handoff this time goes to the bruising back Williams. And Tim, as tough as anybody in the country, if you try and take him down on the first tackle, it's not going to happen. It's just amazing how many tackles he breaks. Very rarely does the first guy get him down. And you, you can describe both backs that way, but Javante Williams is the back that wants to run you over. There's no question about that. Yeah, he wants to make it hurt. That one pops up. How very short-handed, but they're going to get to him, and down he goes. No place to hide there for Sam Howell as he takes some punishment and loses seven yards. Yeah, he's getting up slow. And I will tell you what, Dave, that is the third time, maybe fourth, I've seen a snap that is high, and basically he's had to, to kind of deal with it. And when you play these mesh point offenses where you, you know, you're faking, you know, fly sweeps and, and things like that, it's imperative in the RPO game, all that stuff, that you have good, clean snaps. They've struggled with that so far. And now Sam Howell's out of the football game. Out of the game, at least for now, and Jacoby Criswell is in, the six-foot freshman. And immediately whistles on the first snap that he gets tonight on third down and 11, and a flag down. Wave game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. And having some third immediate down. trouble with microphones here tonight. And this is a coaching point right here, Dave. If you're a quarterback that gets hurt, well, you might have to come out of the game state now. Because bringing a quarterback no into the out. game when he's not ready, no give him an opportunity. Back. Go down. Have the, the trainers come out and remove you from the field so that Criswell has a chance to work on a snap as you've been having snap issues, has a chance to throw the football. So right. you know, that right there is something they can learn from operationally. All right, a delay of game leading to the timeout. Third and 16 coming up here for Carolina. ACC Network Football is presented by Geico. Happy Geico-ween. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. 
Well, it is the South's oldest rivalry beginning in 1892. The schools have played every year since the end of World War I. There is a discrepancy about 1956. North Carolina forfeited for using an ineligible player in conference action, but both schools count the 1956 game as a W. So the battle goes on, on and off the gridiron as well. How back, but he's going to take immediate contact. He cannot get free as he is taken down by Charles Snowden. Don't look because he could be everywhere tonight. Well, Charles Snowden's just going to get home free, untouched, on the right side of your screen, number 11. And Sam Howell's trying to get Javante Williams out of the backfield, but they don't pick up Charles Snowden. He's six foot seven, about 240 pounds, and I don't know how you turn him loose in a pass protection, but that's a brutal play and obviously makes for a much more difficult field goal. So this will be from 51 yards for Grayson Atkins. Only a long of 40 yards this season. And this one is up. And now it headed for the uprights. And that one is good. He nails it. His longest of the season. So North Carolina adds on. Now on top 10 to 6. So 5.28 to go here in the first quarter. And already you're revving up for a lot of points on that scoreboard tonight. Now Bronco Mendenhall, we were chatting with the Virginia head coach this week, and he considers North Carolina's offense to be almost as good as the Clemson Tigers, the number one team in the country, when they have Trevor Lawrence. Uh, and I think when you look at them, one of the reasons they're so difficult, Dave, is they've got speed at wide receiver, guys that are good in space. They've got running back after running back. It's a good offensive line, a quarterback that makes good decisions. And I think that, you know, as he was pointing out, you know, all their ball carriers, guys that touch the football, are returning from last year. That experience certainly helps as well. Kelly decides not to bring it out. So Virginia with the football to begin this drive and trailing by four points here to North Carolina at Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Katie George with you. Notable opposing quarterback rushing totals this season. This has been a problem to contain these guys for the heels. And it's surprising when you look at the speed at linebacker for North Carolina, but it's obviously been something that's gotten them each week. Here's Kemp now trying that side, and he will scamper out Billy Kemp. He was number one in the sense. ACC in receptions get, per game and a four-yard gain there. You get the sense, Dave, don't you, that like, it's a multiple offense, right? I mean, not only who's taking the snap at quarterback, but that's essentially an option where they're pitching it out to their best wide receiver so far this season. Left-handed quarterback gets this one free. And a complete pass. There goes Simpson down the side. No one's going to pick him up. He gets to the 10, the 5. He is into the end zone. 71 yards. Shade Simpson. And no one caught him. And the points continue to come very quickly here tonight in Charlottesville. Yeah, and it's a matchup with Chaz Surratt, the great linebacker for North Carolina. He's in the middle of your screen. He just comes underneath Billy Kemp, who's trying to set a little bit of traffic for Simpson rather than going over the top. And because he comes underneath, there's no one else left there. And so Chaz Surratt, who's a really good player but still learning the position, decides to come underneath the pick from Billy Kemp. And that sets Shane Simpson free. And this time Delaney with the extra point. And we are off to the races tonight. And it's Shane Simpson. It's the Virginia offense. Have been slow starters, but not tonight against North Carolina. We well, really can't blink tonight, can you? And for Virginia, jumping into the lead here, 13 to 10, two plays in 37 seconds. That's how fast that one was. And that hasn't been 
the hallmark of this Virginia offense this season. They've been looking for big plays, and Shane Simpson delivers there. Kind of a mistake defensively by North Carolina, but Virginia makes them pay. And they sure did, and a 71-yard scamper to take the lead here. Join us for the huddle. It all happens on the ACC Network with the huddle next Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on the ACC Network. I'd say there's a lot to talk about in the huddle, huh? Been, I would have what? to say after this weekend, <laughs> particularly what happened with the Clemson Tigers. 34-28, they did knock off Boston College today. Trevor Lawrence did not play. He'll also miss next week's game against Notre Dame. He tested positive Thursday for COVID-19 as the isolation period and then the cardiac screening as well. Sam Howell trying to spin away, but at the 20-yard line, he is dropped once again. It's his new best friend, Charles Snowden. It is his new best friend. Snowden in his face once again. It's a, a zone read, kind of almost a version of the off uh, option where he's got the ability to give it to the back or spit the ball outside. He doesn't like it outside because it's covered. He's stuck holding the football. And I will say, I do think this is an area where North Carolina finds themselves into some trouble. Sometimes the best thing to do is to call it and run it. Just hand the football off to one of your talented backs. Out of fire here, but overshoots his receiver intended for Walson as tight end. Snowden already, by the way, with three sacks of the quarterback. And four times they have tackled North Carolina for a loss. And we still have four minutes to go in the first quarter. It's one of those things, Dave, when you run this RPO, this run-pass option type offense, you have everybody on the offensive line blocking a run. So if the quarterback is stuck holding the football, they're not pass protecting for him, and we've seen that happen tonight, and now you find yourself in known passing situations. I was going to throw again, and another one incomplete, and a flag down on the play. 4.05 to go here in the first, but a flag down. Intended for Choffrey Brown. And Virginia on top pass by three. Number 15. And pass defense. interference. 15 yard penalty. That's on and Devontae Cross of Virginia. Yeah, it's kind of a miscommunication, I thought, by Brown and Sam Howell. Because Sam Howell looks like he's throwing the vertical. Brown stopping at Bronco Mendenhall. He usually doesn't get that upset on the sidelines. It's furious right now because probably didn't think it was even a catchable ball. I don't think he's been happy with a string of calls in the last couple of weeks. On the run, it's Williams. And again, proving very tough to tackle on first contact. Eventually Snowden, but that's a six-yard gain for him. Yeah, you just look at Javante Williams. He's just he's kind of a finisher. You know, he just... Kind of bounces off people, continues to go. You know, a play that looked like could have been stopped for no gain ends up being a six-yard play for North Carolina. Williams staying in there alongside Howell. He'll get the carry, staying behind his blockers, and down he goes. As he'll gain three yards there, Williams and Carter combined to get almost 230 yards rushing per game. Williams with 12 total touchdowns, which is number two in the nation and man does he break a lot of tackles yeah it's just incredible the, the the strength and it's one of the reasons i think dave that as you look at these guys and their ability to make people miss and javante williams especially sometimes it's okay to just hand it off even if you don't have the perfect look to run the football a lot of times he makes it right third and short here for howell Trying to bounce outside Williams, but they're going to stretch him out. He breaks one right there, breaks two, and gets across the 50-yard line. Well, that was right on cue for a 13-yard gain. Well, listen, it's exactly what you're, what I'm talking about. Look, it's not blocked correctly. In fact, they've got a free runner in terms of Noah Taylor in the backfield. Then you have Nick Grant. Then you have Zane Zandier. That's three of them. I mean... And that's why I think sometimes you can get too cute offensively. Sometimes just trust the backs, and Javante Williams is going to prove you right. The Carter back in there, but he'll throw instead and connects with Brown for a quick strike. 
You know, both of these running backs support each other incredibly well. We talk to them throughout the week, and they really stick up for each other. And, you know, it's not all balloons and, and chocolates all the time. It's not always compliments. They will criticize each other, but they do it in the right way, in a positive way. They critique each other's performances, and they find it really pays off. Right through the middle goes Carter before he's dragged down. Michael Carter with the gain for 15 yards. Yeah, and, you know, to piggyback what you're saying, Dave, with Carter and Williams, you know, they said, you know, Michael Carter talked about we're both humble and we were both born to compete. And the unselfishness in the backfield for North Carolina has made them a much better football team. Those two guys really lean on each other. Carter with another carry to the left. He is taken down. Just a two-yard pickup there for Michael Carter. No, North Carolina with the ability to really pour it on. They did it in their NC State victory. 478 total yards, rushing for 252 with these two dynamic backs. Williams back in now for the heels on second down and nine. Inside the last minute of play in the first quarter. Howell the handoff, Williams again, goes right through one man, sheds another tackler before he steps out. Javante Williams, the junior from Wallace, North Carolina, an eight-yard pickup before Jackson took him out. Yeah, and this is why you can run into bad looks, is basically that safety, Amos, he's coming down and run support. He's there to make the play at the line of scrimmage, but it's that stiff arm just throwing him off of, off of him. It's just incredible, the power. And the, the angry run of Javante Williams. It's going to be very, very close here. Back to that stiff arm a moment ago that you described. I mean, this is like Derrick Henry from the Tennessee Titans type stuff right here. I mean, just just throwing D'Angelo Amos right off of him. You know, at 5'11", 5'10", 220 pounds, he runs with so much power. Atarawa is down the big defensive end, 6'3", about 280 pounds for Virginia. Nadeeb Atarawa out of Sterling, Virginia. And let's go to Katie George on the field. Well, guys, not only is Javante Williams so powerful, he's so low to the ground. He says he always wants his pads to be lower than defenders when running the football, making it harder to bring him to the ground. He says he learned that lesson actually playing linebacker for three seasons in high school. The low man always wins, and that line of thinking was confirmed by teammates Chaz Surratt and Jeremiah Gimmel. Both backers agree it's extremely challenging to tackle a player who's low to the ground, so knowing his own teammates don't like facing a running back with that kind of ability gives Williams even more motivation motivation to do so on the field. Yeah, like he needs even more, right? right? I mean, with all of his talent, and as Tim said, he runs angry and then runs over people. Matarawa on his feet, good sign there as he will walk off the gridiron here with 14 seconds to go in the first quarter. And Virginia leading it 13 to 10 on a quick strike night here on this Halloween in Charlottesville, Virginia. You mentioned earlier today that Notre Dame rolled past Georgia Tech. Notre Dame, the number four team in the country. They await Clemson next. Number three, Michigan lost to Michigan State in Ann Arbor, 27 to 24 in the Big Ten. So fourth down and short. And Howell is going to hand off the football and straight ahead it's Williams to pick up the first down and that is the end of the first quarter it was a quarter. big play first quarter Tim sure was it was Sam Howe getting it started plays down the field quick strike offense I have a feeling there's more to come Charlottesville ready for the second quarter. The first quarter trends, lots of scoring. Howell 88 yards passing, Armstrong doing it with the legs, and Carter and Williams just flat doing it as we anticipated. 
Yeah, and you know, I think we're not surprised to see North Carolina get off to the fast start, but Virginia has been traditionally a slow starting offense, not tonight. So trying to continue this drive and another run here by Carter as they keep it on the ground, which has been such a devastating attack this season for the Heels. That'll gain two yards. Virginia losing at Miami in the rain last Saturday, 19 to 14. It was Virginia's fourth consecutive loss. So, of course, they cannot afford another one here tonight and playing a very talented North Carolina team in Charlottesville. Carolina, by the way, last two drives really controlling the ball and controlling the clock. Second down and eight for the sophomore Sam Howell. And he's going to keep it. He's off to the left side and he scampers into the end zone. A flag is dropped, however. A flag down as Howell went for the end zone. Offense. And a hold against Carolina. Second down. A lot of times when you have a big guy, Dave, in this case, you know, a 250 pound tight end trying to block in space against a smaller, quicker player. You see 88 left side of your screen. He just grabs Amos as Amos tries to spin around, spin out of the block. And then in the open area, extended arms grabbing jersey, easy for the official to see. So instead of the touchdown, a second down and 18 for the heels. Pressing the matter inside the 20 yard line. The give to Williams attempting to bounce out. As he goes down, Gavante Williams with another carry. And earns just one yard. This is a century and a quarter rivalry going way beyond the academic excellence of both of these institutions. Of course, Thomas Jefferson founded UVA. The president, Woodrow Wilson, was a Virginia grad. President James Polk attended North Carolina. Virginia will boast the writer, William Faulkner, North Carolina. Thomas Wolf. It really goes like that through the history of both schools. Howell looking downfield. Lots of time. It's batted away and nearly picked off. As the football is loose and Howell will pick it up, but it's dead. As that pass got batted away, Howell Real had time. Then suddenly he didn't. Fourth down. Now he gets stuck holding the football and... Again, some of these known passing situations it's not been the strength. You see him scheme blocking it, pulling the left guard, and Brian Anderson gets beat. Zane Zandier is there, and I have to tell you, this is a fumble. I thought so when it happened, but that ball is out. That's not an incomplete pass. Nobody jumps on the football. Sam Howell literally picks it up. Review. That ball should have been live. That's a clear recovery, and I think he ends up running into the end zone. Absolutely. He just lost the handle on it. We'll take the break. The play under review. Three-point lead for Virginia. All right, so on the field, it was ruled an incomplete pass. Tim, you think for all the world, this should be a fumble and a recovery by North Carolina. Yeah, and I think it should have probably ended up as a touchdown because of Sam Howell's awareness. Zane Zandier gets to Sam Howell before he throws the football, and that is an empty hand going forward. That is a loose ball, not an incomplete pass. In fact, the official at the bottom left of your screen throws a beanbag, ruling that I basically, I think the this is a fumble. Howell ball, picks this up. His hand moving forward. It's a fumble, which was recovered. Yep, it in the has been overturned. By the offense. It will be fourth down at the 16-yard line. The clock is correct, and we'll start on my signal. All right, so the call reversed. It is a fumble, but he was headed for the end zone. Yeah, but I, but it, I don't think it was ruled an incomplete pass. I, did the official say that there was a whistle that was blown when that ball hit the ground? I mean, it, Sam Howe played as if it were a fumble. Like, he did he not did. hear a whistle. And so for them to blow the whistle after Sam Howell has picked it up and started running with it makes no sense. That is a poor job of officiating if that is indeed what happened. Because if you're not going to blow the whistle when that ball initially hits the ground, ruling it an incompletion, you might as well continue the play. 
but to blow it after Hallis picked the ball up and run Makes with no it, sense. especially after the official yeah. has thrown a bean bag as if he thought that it were a fumble, that just should not happen. Let's see if you can hear the whistle. If there was one. And he had the presence of mind to scoop it up, and it should have been a touchdown. Katie, you can add to this. You're exactly right. There was no whistle blown until after Sam Howell picked it up and started heading to the end zone. There was no whistle blown prior to that. Everyone on this North Carolina bench, no one heard it. Well, clearly by Sam's reaction. Katie, I, I don't know why. By rule, for the North Carolina you know, player, we would think that there was. recovered the fumble. And then a whistle was blown after the recovery. It was an inadvertent whistle. By rule, North Carolina has the choice to replay the down at the previous spot. It will be third down. So by rule, Carolina has the option to replay it from the original spot. Well, I will tell you that, you know, inadvertent whistle you know, I don't know the, the true meaning of inadvertent, meaning like, hey, I got it wrong and blew the whistle, or it was an accidental whistle, whatever the situation may be. It's been a bizarre sequence. So third and 14 at the 16 for North Carolina. He's going to throw short and complete to Carter. Carter trying to make some additional yards as he bulls ahead. And he will get three back. And that'll bring up fourth down. So a bit of a mess there. And 13 minutes to go here before halftime. And Carolina to bring on Grayson Atkins, who has already stuck a long one in this game. And this will be much shorter. This will be from 30 yards for the kicker out of Boiling Springs, South Carolina. Yeah, looking to get the Tar Heels on the board again. And that kick is up, and that kick is perfect. So this one is all tied up 13-13 in the second quarter. Join us for Sunday Best all day here on the ACC Network. Field hockey at noon. Wake Forest against BC at 1.30. Virginia Tech and BC in women's soccer. Number five, Duke in women's soccer taking on Miami at 3.30. And then number 13, Notre Dame facing the number one team in the country, North Carolina, at 5.30 all on Sunday. Well, a real good one brewing here tonight in Charlottesville, Virginia on Halloween, tied up 13-13. We've seen five possessions and five scores, Tim. Yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of offense. Ah, you know, we've seen everything. We've seen a sustained drive. We've seen the big plays. And I'll be honest, Dave, I, I like offensive games. When you're not scoring points, <laughs> not nearly as fun. I figured you might. As Evan will sail right through the end zone. I figured that might be the case. Now, let's be honest. If we weren't scoring touchdowns, I might leave and just start handing out Halloween candy. Okay? I mean, I just... But since we're scoring touchdowns, I'm sticking around. Look at Virginia offense on the first drive and the second drive and quick strikes. And by the way, that's something you can do. You can pretty much reach out of your <laughs> office window there in Nashville where you're calling the game from tonight. I'm in New Hampshire. Katie George right there on the field. First down and 10, rolling Armstrong, the lefty quarterback, is going to fire here. And that one's going to be incomplete. You, know, you talk about left-handed quarterbacks, there aren't very many of them. Only 10% of the population is left-handed to begin with. It starts there. It does start there. We've heard, I think Dabo Sweeney kind of referred to him as uh, Steve Young, maybe, you know. And I think, you know, when you're looking for left-handed comparisons, you know, there aren't as many to choose from. But Brennan Armstrong, a really good football player. And, you know, they'll move him either direction. He rolled left there, but they'll move him out to the right as well. Going to hand off to Tyler Papa. 
He drags a couple of tacklers with him. Very tough run there. Surratt bringing him down, but he's going to gain 10. Boomer Esiason doesn't want to be left out of that conversation when you talk about lefty Sue. Going to be very <laughs> oh, he short. Does, he does not. Or Tebow or Matt Liner. There have been plenty of good ones, so it's not like there can't be a good one. That is for sure. And you know, I think the staff here at Virginia is really excited about his future. Bronco Mendenhall has been very clear. He's their starter. He believes they're a tougher football team with him as their starting quarterback. On third down, he's going to keep it, takes a hit, and dives across the 30-yard line. Armstrong unable to make much out of that play. That's, in fact, going to lose three yards for Virginia. And this is one where if he has the decision, handing it to Talapapa might have been the right move because Tyrone Hopper is standing right there as he tries to keep the football and does a nice job of keeping him bottled in as the rest of that pursuit gets there. So it's our first punt of the game. And Virginia on fourth down and five. Daz Newsom awaiting the punt for North Carolina. Nash Griffin to unleash the first punt tonight. That tells you something here with 11 minutes to go before halftime and a whistle. Play game. Offense. And a five delay of penalty. game. Fourth down. It'll be a five-yard penalty. Also today, number five, Georgia, got by Kentucky 14-3. A lot of football tonight. Number two, Alabama facing Mississippi State. Number three, Ohio State. Number 18, Penn State squaring off it's nice to be talking about the big 10 scores again dave i was thinking the same thing just it's nice to have saturdays full of college football you know bronco mendenhall mentioned to mention to us you know, we weren't sure what it was going to look like this season but it started to feel like some pretty normal saturdays with all the college football we've been able to watch it certainly does that's a 51 yard punt by griffin we are tied up 13 13 in charlottesville In Charlottesville tied up 13-13. How about the game today between Boston College and number one Clemson? Uy Angalale taking over a quarterback for Trevor Lawrence, and he had himself a day off to the races. So did ETN, by the way. Another spectacular day by the outstanding Clemson running back. They're down 18 at one point in the first half. Just obviously good kind of mental toughness and poise in that moment, but BC gave them a handful, much like North Carolina did a year ago. A pretty impressive performance the way Clemson was able to battle back. Leon Galale with over 340 passing yards. He's going to have to do it again next week because Trevor Lawrence will not be ready to go coming back from COVID-19 against Notre Dame. There's a dart of a pass and off to the races. There goes Brown. Joffrey Brown all by himself. He is into the end zone. And another gigantic strike on a night already filled with them. This goes for 76 yards. Unbelievable. 76 yards is right. And Choffrey Brown doing most of the hard work. It's an RPO, a run past option. They're going to block the run up front. But Sam Howell's just going to pull the ball from Michael Carter and just basically throw a slant to Choffrey Brown, the younger brother of Diami Brown, who had the long touchdown earlier. I think Mike Brown, or Mac Brown might say, are there any more that come play <laughs> wide receiver for me here? Good right. Lord, how about that speed? And the extra point is on the money. Well, that was 12 seconds. Another touchdown drive went 85 seconds. So they are not waiting around and killing time. So it is 20 to 13, North Carolina. Well, Dave, Tim, Deami Brown, he's so complimentary of his younger brother. He said Choffrey's greatest strength is his speed, and that was on full display. Deami said, I don't know where it came from or how he got it, but he is the fastest player on this UNC team and definitely faster from me. The two of them raced a couple years back, and Deami said, I'm not racing him again. It's a great gift, and he's got to use it, and that was a perfect example of it. <laughs> oh, well, I would well, agree with that. brothers have been sensational, and they're doing it in this game. You've got Tamari and Taman Fox on the defensive side for North Carolina. Those brothers.
So 20 to 13 lead here for North Carolina. And Kelly back will watch that sail out of the end zone here for Virginia. So they will look for the quick answer. They've been able to do that tonight. And what has been a wild one already, Tim? Yeah, it has been a wild one. And you're right, David. They have found the big play, Virginia. But, you know, it really is what we expect out of North Carolina. We saw them a number of times last year, and it was the speed of wide receiver that was so good. And, created so many big plays reference Sam Howell completions of over 30 yards now Virginia has to find a way to respond so Armstrong on first and 10 rifles that one complete to Kemp so that goes for seven for Billy Kemp who just keeps racking him up he's number one in the ACC with about eight eight and a half receptions per game and they're going to want to move it quickly here. Second down and three. Brendan Armstrong back to full health. And they're going to hand this one off. And that's going to be Simpson again. We'll pick up the yardage straight up the middle. That goes for 13. Stopped by Jeremiah Gimmel with the tackle. I get a sense, Dave, that they want to get Shane Simpson more involved. The transfer from Townsend you know, really kind of came in and I think opened some eyes with his ability. Wayne Talapapa has been the guy, but I do feel like they they have something else with how they use Shane Simpson. Flush out of there now, Armstrong. Still on his feet, he'll slide ahead. And a nice run by Armstrong for 11. And he picks up a first down. This is where he's dangerous, Dave. You know, he, he basically is looking to pass the football, decides to take off as a scrambler, and Dylan Rankensmeyer does a nice job of kind of finding his way to a defender there. And you know, as he takes off running, it's like he may have Billy Kemp, Kemp down the field, but he kind of started looking off to his right, and as he starts to scramble, sometimes finding where everybody is ends up being difficult. Simpson back with him again in the backfield. This time it's Thompson in motion. They'll hand off. He can throw it too as a quarterback puts it in the air. A lot of contact there, and that's why the flags are down. Interference. So that play was very confusing for the defense with Keaton Thompson, the 6'4 graduate, putting it in defense, the air. Number 12, 15 yards penalty, and an automatic first down. Automatic first down. Well, you know, it wasn't a trick play, and maybe the key on that is when he takes his glove off, he maybe is throwing the football, but they decide <laughs> to hand him the ball, and he's throwing the ball down the field, and Tamon Fox just doesn't do a good enough job of locating the football. He's really known more as a pass rusher, and Shane Simpson is running down the sideline. He does a good job of fighting back through the contact. So another trick play from this Virginia offense. And on to keep. Armstrong trying to cut back inside and stopped on the play after a two-yard pickup. Now Virginia with a strong running attack from the quarterback position. Remember Armstrong coming back after missing a game and a half to the concussion. And while he was out, they shuffled in three different quarterbacks. And one of those was Ira Armstead, who didn't even dress for this game tonight. Here against North Carolina. Second down and nine for the left-handed quarterback. And he will fire that one. Nice catch made on the near side here by Jana, who's had at least one catch now in 22 consecutive games after that effort. And a flag Holy, down. Number 42, offense. 10-yard penalty. Second down. So 10-yard penalty on the hold here against Virginia in this drive with 8.13 to go in the second. And a 20-13 North Carolina lead. Armstrong, the Correction. leading rusher tonight Correction. for Virginia with 44 yards. Correction. The holding was on number 42 defense. Penalties decline. Well, how about that? Goes the other way. We'll switch a route. That, that'll help uh, if you're the Virginia offense. You know, it's interesting seeing Terrell Jana you know, come up with a catch. I feel like he's kind of been the forgotten guy a little bit, Dave, don't you? You know, a year ago, yes, they had other guys at wide receiver, but Terrell Jana 
made a lot of plays. In fact, Jay Bateman said he kind of had a field day against us. And I think he's a, he's a smart football player. He's got a great feel. He is definitely better playing inside than playing outside. But I just think he's a reliable player that they probably need to find more opportunities for. A very intelligent player as well. Senior from Vancouver, British Columbia. First down and 10 after the reversal of the penalty and incomplete by Armstrong. So bring up the second down here. That was intended for Terrell Jana. So under eight minutes to go before halftime in Charlottesville. Great to have you with us tonight here in prime time on the ACC Network. And fireworks right away in this one. And they've continued. Kelly in motion. Armstrong looking his way. And he's going to fire this one to his tight end. And it's dropped. And that was for Poljan. And an incomplete pass. Really going to feel is an incomplete four pass. And this to me looks like the right call. Poljan just run a little bit of an out route. Not I didn't think that he had enough control of it before it was punched out. And significant, it's going to make for a long, I don't know, looking at it again, I maybe could feel slightly different about it. And Paul Jan, who made an absolutely sensational catch last weekend against Miami. Armstrong over the middle and into the end zone, a touchdown. Rashawn Henry, well, the coaches were telling us midweek, you may want to keep an eye on number 17, and he's into the end zone, an 18-yard touchdown reception. Yeah, they were telling us that, day because they feel like he's capable. They're going to give him chances. He had a drop earlier tonight. It just does a nice job of getting his body inside. Brennan Armstrong does a nice job of hanging in there with an unblocked defender running at him, finding a throwing lane. It's Tamon Fox is coming up the field, and that ball is right to the face mask of Rashawn Henry. And they do need some of these wide receivers to step up outside with no Lavelle Davis in the lineup. The extra point is true, and it is tied 20-20. Virginia, three touchdowns on four possessions tonight. They have got it rolling. I guess it goes without saying, Tim, you know, one quarterback playing really well is better than three who play okay, but Armstrong is having really, really a fine night. Yeah, I think that's so true, Dave. You know, they've been able to manage their quarterback situation with Armstrong out, but with Armstrong in and then passing the ball as well as he's passed it tonight, kind of see the impact that it's had on this Virginia offense that really had been struggling. So, huge difference. All right, North Carolina and Virginia with a flag down here engaged in quite a tussle. And the South's oldest standing rivalry. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. It's a really smart play here by Michael Carter, the returner. Ball's kind of bouncing around. Maybe he isn't going to reach the goal line. So he puts himself out of bounds and touches the football, which then puts the ball as if it were kicked out of bounds, which is why the flag is thrown. That's why he's celebrating. That's a smart play by a really good running back and obviously pretty smart returner. Yep, that's a senior play. 7.45 left in the half. And Carter, the running back, along with Sam Howell as they start this from the 35, and he's going to dart that pass and complete. And that will go for 18. Simmons with the catch. Emory Simmons now on the North Carolina side. We were told, be ready to see the sophomore from Parkton, North Carolina. That's just his sixth catch of the season. How, by the way, eight out of nine passing and now nine out of ten. And once again, going to dart that one to Simmons. As he picks up the yardage. 
And that goes for 21 yards for Howell, who is putting together an outstanding night here in Charlottesville. Well, he had one last year against them. He threw for four touchdown passes. And going to be dragged out of bounds here, Daz Newsom, after the completed pass that going to be minus a yard on that play. That's, an, that's another play where Noah Taylor does a good job of beating the perimeter block. We saw a play made earlier. That one there was almost a disaster for Daz Newsom. I think what you see North Carolina trying to do is get the ball to these receivers out in space. They clearly feel like they have an advantage there. Second down and 11 for the heels. And how back to throw. Pressure on him, trying to spin away, but he can't get free as he's taken down. And a loss of seven. It was Nick Jackson with the sack. That's a play action on second down. You see Nick Jackson's a cross dog. You see Zandir zero. And Nick, Nick Jackson basically switch spots as they come up to the line of scrimmage. And it just isn't sorted out correctly by the North Carolina offensive line. And Nick Jackson basically becomes a free runner at Sam Howell is able to get him down. Jackson leading the ACC with about 10 and a half tackles a game. Virginia already with four sacks tonight. Out back to throw again, airing it out, a long one to the end zone, and stepping out of bounds with the catch, but incomplete is Brown. So incomplete, Amos with the coverage in the secondary. I think De'Ami Brown actually kind of does a poor job of not leaving his quarterback room and then fading to the football. Yes, this ball is going to maybe land out of bounds, but if you if you catch it over your shoulder rather than kind of you know at your hip, there's a chance you can put your feet in bounds. Obviously, juggling the football around, but I think more importantly, Virginia getting after them. Four sacks already tonight. Force a third and long. This is from 52 yards, and it's not going to get there. Right to the left. He had hit one earlier from 51, so this remains 20-20 with about five and a half minutes to go in the half. And every morning on the ACC Network, make sure that you join Mark Packer and Wes Durham as they bring you the latest sports news from all 15 schools in the conference. Packer and Durham, weekdays at 7 a.m., on ACC Network and the ESPN app. And if you're very lucky, you'll see Tim Hasselbeck at that hour. But you you'll have to be me. exceptionally lucky. <laughs> First down to 10. And on the carry, Talapapa trying to wriggle free for an additional yard or two. He picks up four on that effort. North Carolina coming in, the number 15 team in the country. They're only lost to FSU 31 to 28 at Tallahassee. So they are that close to being undefeated. And there were several drop passes at the end of that game. In fact, three of them that cost them the opportunity to win that ball game. And a terrific come from behind effort. Armstrong back to throw. And now he's going to run again. He's going to head for that sideline and scamper out of bounds. Inside the last five minutes of the half, Armstrong with the carry. You know, Brennan Armstrong was kind of in a similar situation. Not a tie ball game, but at Clemson. They called a bootleg. He throws an interception. It kind of flipped the game for them a little bit. I think it's a kind of a learning experience for Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, of how you call plays in this environment. You're knotted up. But, you, you know, you want to obviously possess the football, be great to score. But you also don't want to do anything to kind of put your defense in a bad spot defending a short field. Third and four, big play. He's trying to take off again, but that hole closes up on him, and down he goes. Trying to scamper for that first down, but never happened. Fox with the tackle. It loses six yards. And you see here, Brennan Armstrong, eyes downfield, but then next thing you know, like he's eager to run. And one of the things you can do if you're just going to rush four as a defense, 
is twist up front. So see how open that looks, and then all of a sudden here comes Taman Fox because you're twisting up front. You're running basically, you know, somebody else. After the play was inside. over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number four, defense. His first of the game. 15-yard penalty. First down. Please wow. reset the game clock to 401. Four minutes, one second, please. Boy, a late flag there on sportsmanlike conduct on Morrison. And we'll keep the drive alive and give them a first down. I mean, that is just an awful penalty in that situation. Mm. We're getting the football back with about four minutes left in the half. Opportunity to end the half with the football, maybe score. Mac Brown writing something down. Is he's not writing, you know, a grocery list there. He definitely is writing something down to probably remind him to talk to Trey Morrison about how badly you can hurt your football team making a mistake like that. Boy, you ain't lying there. Remember, North Carolina has already Turn lost a touchdown. They're first to the half. To a penalty. Now Virginia will take the timeout. Penalty yards, second most in the ACC for North Carolina. This one really hurts them. We're going to take the break. We're tied up 20-20 in a final four minutes of the first half. Virginia's drive is extended from the Trey Morrison penalty, and it's got to drive Mac Brown crazy. He talks about the middle eight territory. He treasures it so much. The last four minutes of the first half, first four of the second half, and finds himself with his football team making a critical error to extend this Virginia drive. Bring up a first down and 10, 340 to go in the half. Armstrong again on the move, trying to make a couple of moves. There is a flag thrown. So another penalty flag, 3.33 to go in the second quarter. Holding, number 55, offense, 10-yard penalty, first down. Alua Timmy, the center, with that penalty. i tell you what, it's getting kind of chippy out here. You know, you guys kind of getting after each other. Top of the screen here, coming out of the slot. Look at Terrell Jana. And Chapman kind of go at it. And as this play continues, just keep your eye on those guys very far from the football. That's Chapman and Jana wrestling out of bounds. Armstrong wants to throw over the middle, but incomplete. Intended for Jana, but it didn't get there. Tied up 20-20. Both offenses... At least up to this point, had been clicking like nobody's business. They had combined for just under 500 yards here in the first half. So second and long here for Armstrong. Trying to get Virginia on the scoreboard again. Looking to throw. Good pocket. Fires and a completed pass. That had something on it. And Virginia picking up a first down. Jana eventually tackled by the strong safety Grimes. It's a really good throw by Armstrong here. You see the zone. You see the two linebackers split Gimmel and Surratt. And here comes Jana right in there. Good anticipation by Armstrong. A nice job of just kind of settling down in that hole by Terrell Jana. And a gain of 21 to pick up the first down. We may look back on that penalty as maybe the key play, certainly in the first half. First down and 10 from the shotgun. He's rolling again and firing. And Jana stepping out. He said he made the reception. And they're going to get together, and it's incomplete. Really on the field is an incomplete pass. Second down. Jana's working the sideline here, and Mm. Uh, you know, looks like he re-grips yep. the football out of Correct. bounds. So even if that foot was you know, still in bounds, you know, as he contacted the ball, yeah, he did, did not, not possess it cleanly, no. Right. Heck of an effort, though, by Janet just to keep that foot down. 
Had he had control, it should have been a completed pass, but he did not. He is still trying to get a handle on it. Armstrong will throw to the near side, and that's incomplete. Intended for Kemp. So Virginia, the time beginning to become a factor here. 2.19 to go in the half. Facing a third down and 10. Bronco Mendenhall told us in our meetings with him this week, third down will decide this game. Yeah, and I don't think living in third and 10s is exactly what they want to do offensively. It doesn't play to the strength of Brennan Armstrong, even though they've had some success on third and long tonight. Talapapa flaring out another flag here. A lot of those in the Full last five start. minutes. Number four, offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. They will hit the junior, Billy Kemp, for that one on a false start. North Carolina, number 15. And 4-1 and one coming in in a real battle against 1-4 and four Virginia. But the Cavaliers will tell you to a man... They feel like that is not indicative, the one and four, of how well they have played at times. The stats kind of back them up from what they were a year ago. Again, trying to scramble, and down he goes. Armstrong, no place to run or hide there. And he'll take the loss of nine yards, and Fox with the tackle. And Armstrong just gets caught holding the football. Timeout, think... North Carolina. They're second of the half. This will North be a 30-second second second timeout. Tonight. You see Armstrong, he's looking to the top of the screen. He just ends up holding the football. Please reset the game clock to two minutes, 10 seconds. 2-10, you know, please. On, on that drive, it seemed like a fair amount of max protect situations, meaning, you know, they're keeping both backs in to block it up, and it's maybe a three-man route. And, you know, Carolina's playing a lot of coverage and kind of forced – Brennan Armstrong to hold the football a few times. The one on the, the incompletion to Jana on the sideline and then that sack there. And I will say, if you get into situations like that, Dave, and third and long, and I think he's, especially for a young quarterback, the idea that you're going to get a first down on third and 15 is highly unlikely. Just the feeling, you know, of taking a sack, even though it probably doesn't amount to much, whether you're punting either way, if you would have just handed the football off, just from kind of a morale, how it feels standpoint, can really help your quarterback out. And so, I think looking back at that situation, screen, draw, maybe even a quarterback draw, pick up seven yards, punt, whatever it may be, just creates a different feeling rather than having a frustrated quarterback on the sideline. Well, both offenses pretty choppy here with plenty of penalties in the last several minutes of the half. And so Virginia forced to punt on fourth and 24. Toe Groves with a fair catch, and he lost the handle on it, and a swarm on the football. Virginia says they have it, and indeed they do. Groves mishandling that. Really on the and field. the Cavaliers. The kick was muffed by the receiving team. Recovered by the kicking team. First, First turnover of the game. That yeah, Toe Groves is coming up the field and just kind of squeeze the elbows. That ball goes right between his arms and hits him in the chest and pops out. And then good hustle by the coverage team of Virginia. The punter's excited. He should be excited. And this kind of still goes back to that penalty that extended the possession. It's kind of still part of that possession when you think about the fumble punt. Well, time to do something with it now. Here's on to carry Simpson. Simpson trying to bounce outside. Took a couple of hits before he's taken down. Shane Simpson making his presence felt in this one. Hollins eventually with a tackle, but he's going to gain six yards. That brings up second down here for the Cavaliers. Trying to capitalize on what could be a huge turnover in a 20-20 game. Then knocking on the door. Brendan Armstrong with his tight end. Poljan, who is such a reliable target for him, he's going to flare this one out instead to Kelly. Kelly trying to sideline, and out he goes. He got very close to that pylon. Chased out by Renee, but a big play. First and goal. 
Yeah, Terrell Janet just does a nice job of setting a pick. You mentioned him being a smart football player. Top of your screen, you're just going to basically run a little traffic. Turn, look for the football. And what that does is it kind of sets a pick on Trey Morrison, who really has Kelly coming out of the backfield or into the flat. First and goal for Armstrong and Virginia in a 2020 game. Talapapa in motion. But a whistle and a timeout. So Virginia will take one here. Timeout, North Carolina. Actually, North They're Carolina will take it. Of the half. And a third and a final timeout. timeout. A minute 17 left. And Brennan Armstrong was bounced back so nicely from the concussion that cost him a game and a half. And trying to punch it into the end zone once again for the Cavaliers. Yeah, I and mean, you mentioned the bounce back. I mean, he really has done a nice job doing it all tonight, running the football well. We mentioned he's been a tough, gritty competitor running the football. You know, and then throwing the football. Done a nice job. Find Simpson on the little flare that ends up going for about 70. I feel like he's seen things well tonight as a passer, which has been a little bit different than his previous starts. You're seeing the impact on the offense tonight. He's passed for two, he's rushed for one, and he's thrown for 159 yards so far. First and goal, Thompson bouncing outside, and in he goes for six points. Keaton Thompson is proving to be quite a weapon and has Virginia in the lead here in the final moments of the first half. Keaton Thompson is quite a weapon, but you could have put anybody back there. You to run this. Look at how well this is blocked. Mm. This is an excellent job by Tony Poljan, the tight end of securing the edge, caving it all in, and then Wayne Talapapa doing a good job of leaning, leaning it up in there as well. Ryan Nelson, the left tackle. The offensive line, tight ends back, doing it all in terms of getting Keaton Thompson a walk-in touchdown. And the extra point makes it 27-20 Virginia. Thompson with his first rushing touchdown of the season. He's played some quarterback. He's also played some wide receiver. The transfer from Mississippi State rumbling into the end zone. You're right, you could have driven a truck through that hole. And Virginia with a minute 14 before the break, leading by seven. I think Keaton Thompson likes playing on Halloween, right? Because he's a quarterback, but he's wearing number 99. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. No. He's lined up at wide receiver. He just lined up at running back and ran one in for a touch. I, is, is the Halloween not made for him? Is that he just, Absolutely. Bunch yeah, of different a, costumes. A full moon as well tonight over Charlottesville. And Virginia out in front, 27 to 20 on number 15, North Carolina. When they played last year, these two teams, it was maybe the best game that we broadcast in the ACC all season long. It was a shootout, 38-31. Virginia won the game. Bryce Perkins, the quarterback for the Cavaliers, was sensational. He accounted for five touchdowns in that contest. Carter's going to take it. And across the 20-yard line, looking for a bigger hole, and down he goes, shy of the 30. The last year was a hugely important win for Virginia because they became bowl eligible that night, Tim. Yeah, this was a fun one. You're not lying. Dammy Brown in that one, this one, and Bryce Perkins not in this one, but man, was he in the one last year. He was so fun to watch. Basically, felt like he was putting the team on his back. What a fun player to see in person, which we got to do a number of times last year. Bronco was so excited, he decided to do high knees on the <laughs> sideline. That's how good it was. It was a dandy of a football game. Howell was terrific as well. Four touchdown passes. Remember, just a freshman at that point and had a remarkable ball game. Williams trying to get the edge there. Javante Williams with the carry. With just over a minute to go before halftime, he'll gain one yard there. The other thing I remember about that game, not a single turnover in that contest. It was a really clean game, really fun game to watch. Yeah, it was. And, you know, we kind of saw the quick strike offense, and we saw it last year, and I think it kind of applies to this situation here with a minute left. Still dangerous territory for Virginia when Sam Howell is pulling the trigger. 
He's going to throw long and a completed pass for a big first down. Complete to De'Ami Brown for 36 yards on that game. Yeah, I just think this scenario is set up for North Carolina offensively. They like going fast. They have speed on the perimeter. And you know, I think Virginia needs to make a decision of kind of how they can try to fool Sam Howell in this two-minute situation. He'll step back, look downfield. He throws, and another completed pass, spinning away. And Carter getting down to the five-yard line. It's Daz Newsom down to the five-yard line. That's a 29-yard pickup. And Nick Grant preventing a touchdown. I think Virginia's kind of late getting lined up and a little bit of confusion. And when they do, they don't have leverage. You see Amos, the middle of the field safety. You see Clary, number 14, doesn't drop back underneath that seam pattern by Daz Newsom. 20 seconds to go. Howe looking for the end zone. Darts it to the back of the end zone, and it's tipped away. Good coverage by Devontae Cross to break it up, intended for Choffrey Brown. And 16 seconds remaining. Yeah, look, with 16 seconds remaining, you're thinking you at least have two shots, uh, you know, with in terms of time on the clock. And so, you know, chances are, you know, you're throwing to the end zone with anything you do. It's like what they did there. You need to throw the ball into the end zone. Throwing it inbounds kind of puts you into a situation where it would be hard to stop the clock. Also had a big half. No timeouts remaining here for the Heels. Second down and goal. He's going to throw again, and that's again incomplete, but a flag is down in the end zone with 12 seconds on the clock. Intended for Newsom. Pass interference, number 14, defense. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Antonio Clary with the interference. And listen, this is okay. Pass interference here. Quite honestly, pass interference on the next play as well is okay if you're Virginia. Because, you know, at some point, there's gonna, not going to be enough time to continue to take shots at the end zone. You're going to end up having to kick a field goal. So from the two-yard line, Javante Williams already with 10 rushing touchdowns this season. It'll be a pass and mishandled off the hands there of Newsom at a loose football way back at the 20-yard line. And that's backwards. That's a lateral, Dave. That, that's not a forward pass, which means the half is over. That's the end of the first half. That is the end of the first half. It's a backward pass. Ruled a backwards pass. And a free football. And the clock running to zeros. What a wild end to this first half. Well, a wild end, and I, I don't like the play because the possibility of this. Well, Sam Howell's throwing it from what looks like about the Early on the field line. of a backward pass is under full further review. The half is not over. All right, so this play is under review. Players were already leaving the field. Well, listen, it was assuming that the first half was over. Yeah, it was ruled a backward pass on the field. They could review it. Uh, but I, I don't think there's going to be anything that, that overturns it. Hmm. And so, you know, the question ends up being is if they're reviewing it, Think about this now. If they're reviewing it. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is halftime. So now we can go to half. Uh, first half that saw three lead changes, two ties, and a whole lot of offense. And a lot more to come. Virginia at the break on top 27 to 20 on number 15, North Carolina. Very entertaining, uh, certainly unless you're a defensive coordinator. And that's a whole other kettle of fish. But if you like points and you like them coming quickly, you enjoyed that half. I mean, it, it was a great first half. Offensively, so many fireworks. I would expect to see more of the same, quite honestly, yeah. in the second half. Let's go to Katie George. Matt, there was a series of unfortunate events there for your special teams and your defense. Your offense almost gets into the end zone. What will your message be to your guys at half? Katie, we just got to play better. I mean, we're sitting here. We have the fumble down here on the punt. We don't have good sudden change. Our defense lets them score quickly. 
We stop them. They're third down and 15. We have an unsportsmanlike conduct push. We're kicking too many field goals. We should have had opportunities at the end, but we throw a ball back behind. Uh, we've just got to settle down and play better. Your quarterback has been under a lot of pressure in the first two quarters. What needs to improve so he's not under so much duress moving forward? We need to stay out of third and long. They're blitzing us on third and long. We're probably holding the ball some. We, we need to make more yards on first and second down. We're moving it. We got to score in the red zone. We got to score touchdowns because they're scoring touchdowns. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thanks to Coach Brown as well. Certainly entertaining. Some mishaps, but a lot of offense. And Virginia leads it 27 to 20 over North Carolina. And after the break, back with halftime and Jordan Cornette, Eric McLean, and EJ Manuel in the studio. The ACC Network football presented by Geico. And on this Saturday night from Charlottesville, Virginia, that was a treat in yeah, the first half. 27 to 20, Virginia with the lead at the break over number 15, North Carolina. Dave O'Brien alongside Tim Hasselbeck and Katie George bringing you our game tonight as we give you a look at our Zaxby's first half stats. 330 total yards for North Carolina, but 246 for Virginia. No problem with the offenses at all, Tim. No, no problem at all for either offense. And you know, some penalties here you see, obviously, you know, telling the story of the game as well, but been a little bit surprised to see how well Virginia has played offensively and obviously get a good shot at it to start the second half. All right, so just getting the second half underway as we go to Katie George. Well, guys, Bronco Mendenhall was happy with his offense's consistency, balance, time of possession, and ball control. He thinks his defense did a nice job slowing down both Carter and Williams and getting pressure on the quarterback. He also felt like they did a nice job with their red zone defense, but again, it comes down to limiting the big plays. He said the explosive plays are why the score is where it's at. Plus a huge pass interference. Little toss here for Simpson, who certainly made a name for himself in the first half. Shane Simpson will pick up five yards here. And tackled by Surratt, but just getting underway here in Charlottesville. The second down and six for Armstrong. A little play action. Looking downfield, heading for the sideline with that pass, but it's going to be caught. And flags are down. We saw a lot of penalty markers at the tail end, Tim, of the first half. So play got pretty choppy there, really on both sides. It really did. Holder, number five, defense. Penalties decline. You draw the play. First down. You see Patrice Renee called with the defensive holding and I think the North Carolina sideline was actually thinking that Billy Kemp was going to get called for a push off. They were a little surprised by the call but looked like at the top of Billy Kemp's route Patrice Rene grabbed the hold a little too much jersey. So first and ten for Armstrong on the opening drive of this half looking for an edge outside as he goes out. Armstrong so good carrying the football. In the first half, he was quite deadly, and he picks up four here. And it's the design quarterback runs that I think Jay Bateman from North Carolina, their defensive coordinator, thought, look, that's probably what they do best, is, is find ways where it's a scripted run. But I've really been impressed with Brennan Armstrong's ability when things break down on a called pass play as a runner. Second down and seven for Virginia. And here he comes again straight ahead and a big gainer as he is tripped up but he'll get the first down easily for 16 yards he goes. Yeah this is a design run here this is a quarterback draw and you can tell because Wayne Talapapa 21 is going to end up being a lead blocker look at him fly up to Gimmel the middle linebacker and then Brandon Armstrong just follows him. Just such a challenge for the defense because everything looks like pass originally. And then here comes a lead blocker and a quarterback who really runs like a fullback coming into the secondary. That's a great point. He does not mind contact. He's not just going to slide ahead. 
He will fire here, and that is going to be broken up by Carolina, intended for his tight end, Cole Jan. They've actually done a very good job on him so far tonight. Trey Morrison busted it up. They have done a good job on Cole Jan. You've mentioned it a few times this season. It's a great conference for tight ends. Tony Poljan it doesn't get talked about as much as some of the other guys, but he is a good one. There's no doubt about it. Kemp in motion. Armstrong looking to throw again, and it's complete. And right on cue, there's the tight end for another first down. That'll gain 16 yards. You know, the ACC boasts three of the top four pass-catching tight ends in the country. Hunter Long at Boston College, number one. Noah Gray at Duke, number two. Poljan, number four in receptions. Yeah, he's, he's really good. And the quarterback play's been you know, unstable, if you will, uh, at Virginia. So to be kind of in that mix, considering what their passing game has looked like, says a lot about how they try to get him the football no matter what. So Thompson back in there running the offense, at quarterback, at least for this play, he's going to tuck it and run. Number 99 on the loose as he gets down to the 20. And a five-yard pickup. Stopped by Taylor, but they will do that from time to time. Bring on Keaton Thompson. Not to pass the football necessarily. But able to pick up large chunks on the ground. And second down coming up. But Dave, I wouldn't be surprised if that was him at quarterback running the football to set something up to try to draw North Carolina into some type of run defense when he's lined up at quarterback. Once again, before he is upended, but he's a very tough runner, too. And a stop by Kelly. This is just quarterback power here, basically. You know, they're going to pull guys around and you know, get a kick out block and pour it up in there. But I think with these mini packages, as they were described by Bronco Mendenhall, for these different quarterbacks that they've had play you do need to come up with some type of wrinkle for Keaton Thompson as a thrower wouldn't be surprised if we see some of that tonight first and 10 from the 15 yard line Armstrong back in and throwing short and a completed pass that one to Jana will gain four yards so on the quick hit they're moving the football again Virginia on top, 27 to 20. Early stages of the third quarter here at Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia. So Armstrong lines them up again. Second down and six for the Cavaliers. Trying to knock off the number 15 team in the country. He's going to throw for the end zone and incomplete. Intended for the tight end again, but flags everywhere on the play. Well, he wanted Paul Jan in the back of the end zone. Pass interference, number nine, defense. By rule, the ball replaced the two-yard line. First down. That's on Cameron Kelly, number nine for Carolina, the pass interference. You just get the sense here that, that North Carolina defensively on their heels. You know, whether it's been the shifts, the motions, the different players lined up at quarterback, Another long sustained drive by Virginia. And first and goal, Armstrong heading for the end zone, but he's going to be denied. Got nothing on that carry as he darted off to his left. And second and goal forthcoming. Now Virginia trying to gain serious control of this one. And Talapapa, big hole, he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Wayne Talapapa, the junior from Hawaii. And another score for the Cavaliers. Now an impressive drive. And this is just getting blown off the football here. Move to the left side of this offensive line. I'm not even sure that North Carolina is lined up correctly. You see Rankinsmeyer, Nelson just pointed down in there, Grant Mish. Tony Poljan doing a good job, but that's just too easy. Delaney on for the extra points. The first time that either side has led by more than one score. And the extra point is good. So Virginia 
looking pretty comfortable at the moment. On top by 14 against number 15, North Carolina. Virginia with a four-game losing skid. They're trying to bust tonight, and their offense is certainly going in the right direction. It had really scuffled him in the four defeats, but not tonight. Been a totally different story, and we've seen them a few times, and a lot of it has been traced back to the quarterback play. Not an issue tonight, obviously, and they look like a completely different offense than we've seen in the past. Yeah, they ripped up 21 consecutive points inside the five. Here comes Carter. Looking to return the kick across the 20 yard line for North Carolina and they need to pull it together. We take a look at our New York Life drive recap. They certainly didn't on that final play of the first half, huh? Well, and that ends up being the key with Virginia's offense playing well. You got to take advantage of your opportunities for the half with about 12 seconds left. The decision not to throw the ball into the end zone, but throw a pass that could be deemed a lateral basically means you're giving up three points because the half ends not to mention your opportunity for a touchdown had you thrown it into the end zone and we talked about that middle eight you know the last four and then the first four you know in terms of the sec first half second half you know mac brown can't be happy don't come away with points at the end of the first half and then the second half starts with virginia going on you know an 11 play drive where they just jam it down your throat for a score it's puzzling, regardless of who the quarterback is, but your quarterback is Sam Howell on a play like that. They gain nine on the first play, and now on the carry, Williams taken down on play number two, stopped by Zandier after he gains four. And it could wind up being a really huge play in this one, but now Virginia up by two scores, leading it 34 to 20. And Howe trying to establish some sort of a groove. He's got first and ten right now for North Carolina. And a handoff Williams. Williams bowling ahead. Will pick up an extra yard or two after contact and he gains four. You know, I think for North Carolina, one of the things I like about them offensively is they lean on you and lean on you and lean on you with the run. And then all of a sudden they pick up a first down, they're at the line of scrimmage quickly and it's shot down the field. But you know, you start to get behind too much. Obviously, two score game here. You know, that leaning on you in the run game, you know, doesn't wear on you the same way it does in a closer contested matchup. Second down six. Howell on the move. Can't get rid of it, and they're gonna drag him down. And once again, Charles Snowden comes up along with Mandy Alonzo. This is a disaster for North Carolina. Again, protection an issue. Double eight got pressure. They don't sort it out. Zandier's a free runner. Now Sam Howell's got to throw it away. I've said it a number of times this year. Less adventure on throwaways. Throw the football away. Instead, he's stuck holding on to the football. Zandier and Snowden kind of have him corralled in, punch the football out, and Mandy Alonzo's there to pick it up making a bad situation worse at the quarterback position. It just can't happen if you're Sam Howell. Well, Snow now 10 tackles and three and a half sacks in this one as Virginia takes it back on the fumble. And Armstrong will fire this one short and completed to Kemp. That's a three yard pickup. And the other thing Matt Brown said was, you know, our defense hasn't done a good job in sudden, sudden change. This obviously a sudden change scenario in defending a short field with the ball on the plus 30 yard line for Virginia. Second down and seven coming up here for the Cavaliers. And a receiver in motion and a handoff. And straight ahead, it's Simpson. Simpson will gain six on that carry. He's been a really nice weapon tonight for the Cavaliers. He really has, and I think that, you know, with kind of the way the offseason went, and kind of, you yeah, have the transfer comes in, trying to figure out a role, and the coaches are learning the players. You know, I think 
you know, having some use for him in the passing game initially, you know, kind of got him involved, and I think that's helped kind of grow his role in the run game. Third and short, Talapapa on the carry as he is tied up in the center of the line. Going to be close here. On the run by Talapapa, stopped by Tamon Fox. So really close. And fourth down coming up, and they will go for it. Kemp on the move. Fourth down and short. Armstrong will carry that, and he will pick up a first down for Virginia. Brennan Armstrong. I like the play call, Dave. You know, when you think about, you know, Bronco Mendenhall talking about maybe taking chances, find, finding times and opportunities to take chances. It's the second, fourth down scenario we've seen them go for it. And second conversion we've seen. I'll tell you, the, the deeper the game gets, the more confident and comfortable Brennan Armstrong looks running this offense. He is back to throw and over the middle right at the goal line and diving in for the score is Pole Jam. Well, an outstanding catch and then the extra effort, 17 yards and another Virginia touchdown. Well, this is one of those ones where the ball leaves his hands and I think, ah, oh, this is a bad idea. There's a middle of the field post safety and you're throwing the ball to the middle of the field. That's a dangerous throw. But because Cameron Kelly you know, kind of gets shielded off by Tony Poljan's big six foot seven frame, Brennan Armstrong gets away with it. And now this Virginia offense has already scored over 40 points. 41 to 20. They are pounding away on the Tar Heels. We talked about Poljan. They had shut him down for most of the night. That is no longer true. He is into the end zone. How about this with five and a half minutes to go in the third Virginia leading North Carolina 41 to 20 tonight's player spotlight brought to you by Geico Brennan Armstrong. Well, and it should be Brennan Armstrong. He's been fantastic. You just look at you know, four touchdowns, three through the air, one on the ground and he's kind of done it all. And he's made good decisions in the passing game. And that's probably been the biggest differentiator in terms of what we saw in his you know, first couple starts of the season, but we've got the spooky Halloween music going, mm -hmm. but it's, I think it's been a pretty impressive performance. Well, it sure has been. And the spooky part of it, of course, is that North Carolina is 4-1 and one coming in, and Virginia's lost four consecutive games, but they have borne very little resemblance to that team tonight, haven't they? Oh, you're exactly right. Think about this. Missed field goal, followed by a muffed punt, then that disastrous end of half situation, and then a fumble by Sam Howell to start the second half. I mean, I, I don't care what you've done in the previous five weeks of the season. That right there is not a recipe for success. So Howell trying to lead the Tar Heels back. First down and 10. And a slip by Michael Carter as he goes down and eventually Nick Jackson gets credit for the tackle but that'll lose two yards yeah, that basically looks kind of like a microcosm of the night for North Carolina you know, Carter with some room to run just loses his footing and goes down it's a clear night with a full moon in Charlottesville Howell unleashing the pass and that'll be caught by Brown Trying to unleash De'Ami Brown on the Virginia secondary. That happened early in the game. But now they're trailing North Carolina 41 to 20. Third down five for Sam Howell and the Heels. The 
Virginia led at halftime 27 to 20. Back to throw. And indeed hits Brown on the near sideline and he'll pick up eight yards and a first down. And we've seen this with these fast tempo offense. You want to get that first first down Dave now be quick and I'm a little bit surprised that we're not seeing I guess they here they come but North Carolina at that point now go fast get into your rhythm down 21. It's an offense that leads the ACC in total yards per game 531 second to Clemson in points per game averaging 38. How complete again to Brown and will pick up another first down. So an 18 yard gain there to move the sticks. And you see that and you see the difference when the pocket is clean and again a little surprised and maybe it's Phil Longo trying to get a look at when Virginia's bringing pressure. Quarterback will keep it and Powell will move on out of bounds. Sam Howell with the carry. They're continuing to move those chains. And I'm with you. I mean, you'd expect a more rapid fire tempo than this, wouldn't you? Down by yeah, this I, kind of I, score. I, I would, Dave, but I, I'm kind of getting the sense that Phil Longo is sick and tired of having busts up front with some of that double A gap pressure from Virginia. And so he wants to slow it down to get a look at it. Well, he's got to run now, and he gets it to the 30 yard line. He will pick up a hard-earned two yards on that carry. That was just a straight four-man rush, I believe. And you know, you know, part of what happens is, and I don't care who you are at quarterback, but you know, I guess Nick Jackson is adding on here, and you know, he does a good job of just retracing steps. But you know, that's a little bit different pressure than than what Sam Howell's been seeing in the first half. On the carry, it's Carter, but got nothing. Did not gain an inch on that one to bring up third down for North Carolina. And this is where Bronco Mendenhall was talking about this season. Bronco also this week describing how third down is so vitally important for his defense to stop Carolina on plays just like this, third down and eight. Williams again in the backfield. He's going to throw it short and a nice grab made over the middle and they'll pick up the first down and that was Williams and they'll gain nine on that pass. This is a great catch. You know normally when you're throwing the backs you want to keep it in the framework of their body. Just run a little bit of an angle route. You know there's a throwing lane there and Sam Howell just kind of misses high and out front but that's a tremendous play Javante Williams makes to get the first down. Williams on the carry trying to bounce outside. And it looked like the football came free for a moment but no turnover. Nick Jackson with another stop for Virginia. The ball was fumbled forward and out of bounds. We'll be returning to start the fumble. Second down. Buffalo start on my signal. And a six yard pickup. He's going down and yeah that ball comes out there. It's Ed Montalus who's hustling down the field. It's never easy for those big guys to recover it cleanly. So to the 15 yard line. Howell with only three incompletions in this one. Trying to dance up the middle. It's Carter. And he gets down to the 10. Dance is right. You just kind of see the vision, patience, shiftiness. Michael Carter. And I'm Phil Longo. I'm going to continue with as much football as left to continue to make sure these backs are touching the football enough. First and goal, and as Brownie is into the end zone, Deami Brown with a reception for the touchdown. It's another, it's another RPO with a slant coming in behind, and Deami Brown again, and. It's one of those things where you know you have two defenders there to make the play for Virginia. Neither one of them can make it, but it's it's a split zone run play. All the offensive line moving to the left. And just a good decision by Sam Howe to pull it and spit it out to Dan Brown. Atkins with the extra point. 
That's three touchdown passes for Sam Howell. He has three incompletions in this game. He does, but he continues to find De'Ami Brown, Joffrey Brown. Probably a good idea if North Carolina wants to come back. Don't forget to vote on Election Day, November 3rd. For more information, visit IamAVoter.com. Well, North Carolina, an impressive drive there to score again. It's 41-27 Virginia. Tar Heels about to kick off. And that drive, 11 plays, 75 yards, and into the end zone. Here's Kelly. Trying to make a spin move, but he's denied. So Virginia with 46 seconds to go in the third to get the football back again. Well, guys, Tim Cross, the UNC defensive line coach, put it perfectly over here on the sideline. He said, this is a heart check, which was then followed by the younger Fox brother being the voice of reason. He said, we're in this game. No more long faces. We have the offense to be able to do it. Let's refocus, do our job on our side. So the sophomore really urging this defense to pick it up. Now they've recently had a comeback fall short against FSU for their only loss of the season. And here goes Simpson once again. Simpson breaking free of a tackle as he gets up near the 50-yard line. Stopped by Surratt, but he picks up 30 yards. Yeah. And North Carolina just gets gashed with this run here, away from the pressure that's coming, and do a good job of covering everyone up. And then Simpson does a good job of breaking the tackle from Kelly. And you know, Jay Bateman's group on the defensive side of the ball has got to find a way to do something. Eight total drives so far they've defended from this Virginia offense, and they've allowed six touchdowns, and this drive for Virginia already off to a good start. And Shane Simpson out of Easton, Pennsylvania, the 5'11", 200-pounder. He's been something of an unsung hero in this game. He has had several really meaty runs, kind of back-breaking runs for Virginia. So that's the end of the third. And it ends with the Cavaliers on the move into the end zone again. Pole Jam with a terrific second effort. Join us for the fourth quarter coming up from Charlottesville. Well, the fourth quarter coming up, and obviously it's big for Virginia trying to snap a four-game losing skid. But ten, for North Carolina, it's gigantic given the fact that Trevor Lawrence is not going to play against Notre Dame next week. We're talking about an ACC championship. It may come down to tonight for North Carolina and a tremendous play here on the near sideline on the pick. And it's Gimbel really with the, the diving play the interception. for the interception. Well, Dave, you said it. It's kind of getting late early for North Carolina. And one of the things that can change that is a takeaway. And this is a great instinctual play by Gimmel. He's the inside backer. He recognizes what they're trying to do. It's actually Patrice Rene who's in the coverage, but he just runs underneath it and cuts it off. And Brennan Armstrong can't believe it. He's late to the flat, leaves it inside a little bit, but that is a great play by Jeremiah Gimmel as he decides to just run underneath that route after diagnosing it. Well, you saw the reaction by Armstrong, the hand of the helmet. Let's see how big that turns out to be for North Carolina. And Howell on the move will spin. He's been so good in the fourth quarter individually in his first two seasons running the offense for the Tar Heels. He's never thrown an interception in the fourth quarter. He's been great. That's a good example there, though, Dave, where he's got to hand the football off. It's an RPO. He decides to pull it, doesn't like the route downfield. He's going to air it out. He's going deep. And that one nearly intercepted. Intended for De'Ami Brown and Nick Grant breaking that up, but nearly picked. It was nearly picked. And this is why if you're the receiver, you got to fight back through contact in this. You spin Nick Grant around. Ball's a little bit underthrown and inside. There's some contact kind of at the moment of truth for the football. But if you will fight back towards the football through the defender, the collision looks bigger and you end up getting the call. Something that De'Ami Brown could have done right there to help his quarterback. Third down and eight for North Carolina. 
Howell in the pocket. Going to throw over the middle and finds a receiver wide open. It's Newsom to haul that one in. And that goes for 30 yards. And this is a great play by Sam Howell. He actually starts with Dan, Daz Newsom. Doesn't like it. Goes back outside. Then comes back to Newsom. Isn't able to kind of follow through because Zane Zandier's arm is there. But to drop that down to, to Daz Newsom is an incredible play by Sam Howell. Now to throw again, looking for the end zone, and it's going to be out of bounds. And incomplete the coverage by Cohen King. And it was a good coverage by Cohen King. He's basically kind of undercutting the corner route. And it's one of the reasons Sam Howell kind of led Daz Newsome as far as he did outside and that ball clearly is caught out of bounds so Javante Williams in the backfield he'll take the carry trying to get outside before they stop him he'll gain four yards there and the Tar Heels came storming back from an ugly 31 to 7 hole in the final moments against FSU a couple of weeks ago had a shot at would have been a remarkable come from behind win. They had three different receivers drop a pass inside the last minute, forcing a turnover on downs, and that sealed the ball game. Trying to come back again here tonight in Charlottesville. Third down and seven. Now throws again, complete to Brown. Brown looking to scamper into the end zone, and he's in for a touchdown. Deami Brown again. That's a 13-yard touchdown strike for North Carolina. Yeah, and it's man coverage. And just a little arrow route and just a great job of Deami Brown losing Devontae Cross. Just too much speed and then good strength running through the tackle from Amos. You see that there. Kind of sell the shallow cross. Bounce back out of it. And Devontae Cross just doesn't look like he can run. With Deami Brown, it's incredible. 41 to 33 with 13.09 to go here in the fourth quarter. So a ton of time. And Grayson Atkins on for the extra point. North Carolina inching closer, and that one true. And it is now 41 to 34. Well, we saw North Carolina battle back against Florida State, trying to do it here against Virginia. Sam Howell to Demami Brown once again. And we welcome you back to ACC Network Football presented by Geico. North Carolina has tightened this one up. Deami Brown, an outstanding wide receiver, the junior from Charlotte, just hauled in his third touchdown catch of the ball game. He had three for the season coming into play tonight. So Carolina kicking off. And Kelly will put a knee down. Let's take a look at that pick. And it looked like, you know, Virginia's kind of be able to close this thing out. It's Jeremiah Gimmel, great instincts, seeing it running under Billy Kemp for the interception, which ultimately leads to Sam Howell finding De'Ami Brown once again for, as you said, Dave, his third touchdown of the night. What a night so far for both Howell and De'Ami Brown. And keep in mind, the Virginia lead was 21 with under one minute to go in the third. And now 41 to 34. Armstrong will keep it. Looking to move outside. And trying to fight ahead to the 30-yard line. He'll pick up five yards on that carry. And almost 13 minutes remaining to him. If I'm Robert and I, 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 I'm relying heavily on the run game. And that means quarterback runs. It means runs with Keaton Thompson. I'm really picking my spots in terms of letting Brennan Armstrong throw the football. They will keep it on the ground and the carry is Tyler Papa as he stacked up in the center of the line. But able to move it, a flag down.
And Virginia has been effective on the ground. 5.3 yards per rush tonight. And here's the call. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number two, defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. It's another really dumb play by North Carolina. You see coming on the left side of your screen, Don Chapman just come flying in as you know, Shane Simpson is being held up and just cleaning off an offensive lineman standing around the pile. And look, it's really easy for officials to see. It's kind of like a frustration penalty. You think about the one earlier to Morrison, that one there. Two brutal mistakes by secondary players for North Carolina. Yes, yeah, some very, very costly penalties for the Heels this evening. Armstrong is going to run it now. Trying to move outside, he'll slide on down. But his mobility is such a big, big weapon. He'll pick up four yards. And Robert and I would much rather this when he calls pass plays in this scenario. If it's not perfectly clear, then Brennan Armstrong, do this. And also, don't be afraid to go ahead and protect yourself. I think that's kind of good growth we've seen out of Armstrong. Knowing when you lower your shoulder to try to go get a first down, and also knowing, hey, listen, it's okay. Pick up four, get down, play another play on second down. He's Virginia's leading rusher tonight with 62 yards on the carry. Simpson, you mentioned the offensive coordinator, Robert and I. It remains one of the better stories that when he was done playing, Robert returned home to Hawaii and served as the model for the towering surfing statue which stands proudly on Waikiki <laughs> Beach. I'll tell you what, I would tell that story every day of my life if I were Robert. I, I thought that there were a few beaches in New Hampshire that have statues of you. <laughs> is, that, is, that not, is that not accurate? Those beaches have summarily closed. <laughs> no further visitors, please. 10.41 to go in this one. And keeping it on the ground again, it's Talapapa. He's also a star growing up in high school in Hawaii. And a big, big call here. Fourth down coming up, and they're awfully close here, just inches away. And it looks like their offense is out there. You think you've converted on two fourth and shorts already this evening. Would not be surprised if they do go ahead and snap this and have some type of read for the quarterback, either give it to the back or possibly even quarterback power. Talapapa stacked up that time. Boy, this is going to be close. This is going to be close, but I think it's a great second effort by Talapapa. You know, he's met at about the line of scrimmage and does a nice job of spinning out of it and then continuing to kind of just drive those legs. That's just great running back effort for the first down. See the collision there at the line of scrimmage with Cameron Kelly. But he's just able to continue to kind of spin out of it, out of the contact, and continue to drive his legs. That's yeah, a heck that of an effort. Heart. Yep. To pick up the first. And a big, big play there for the Cavaliers. And again, the ground game continues and straight ahead and a really, really tough run there by Shane Simpson before he stopped by Surratt. And this is what I mean a little bit about relying on the run game if you're Robert or not. I mean, I, I just feel like North Carolina is reeling. I mean, we're just in a situation where, I mean, that's a nine-yard run on first down after they just were able to kind of bully you a little bit for a first down on a fourth down play. And not only do you kind of just slow the game down, sh you know, shorten it, if you will, I'm just imposing your will a little bit on this North Carolina defense. Thompson back in at quarterback. Kemp in motion. Fake the handoff to him. He's going to dart outside. He's very difficult to bring down on the initial contact, too. And that will get him the first down. Dede Hollins with the stop, but too late to prevent the first down. So 41 to 34, Virginia. And once again, Armstrong will return at quarterback for the Cavaliers. And that clock continues to run. Still eight and a half minutes to go. But look at the rushing yards. Now, Virginia approaching 200 yards on the ground. And we came on the air justifiably raving about Carter and Williams for North Carolina. 
Virginia with 13 first downs on the ground and flags down. 8-10 to go. Offside, number 15, defense unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, I mean, Hollins is trying to time up his blitz here. It looks like he's trying to time up the motion and blitz. And I mean, he's about three yards across the line of scrimmage and decides to turn around and point at Tony Poljan like it was somehow <laughs> his fault. It has got you. So first down and five with Armstrong back at the quarterback. And he will carry it across the 20-yard line. And there aren't many programs that can say, well, we're really comfortable with our quarterback carrying it, you know, 20, maybe 25 times in a game, given the fact that he can also throw it so effectively. Yeah, and it's usually hard to do that. It's hard to throw the football when you're tired after you've just been fighting for extra yards, but he does a nice job of it, and then they supplement it with Keaton Thompson. And Sitting here at second and one, I would continue to pound the football. Coming up with a seven-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Virginia trying to find the end zone again. And the quarterback will throw, and it's going to be incomplete. As he wanted Rashawn Henry, but incomplete. And I think that was a you check, we check scenario where, you know, before the snap, it looked like there was going to be a corner blitz. They didn't get it. And then basically they checked out of it. Sean Henry falls down running to the corner. Well, not the best ball of the night by Brennan Armstrong, but that's one you'd like to see your receiver make in this situation. New Virginia eating up a lot of the clock. This drive right here is a little bit over six minutes. And another carry continuing to stay on the ground. That was Keaton Thompson. And that's that same play we saw in the first half, Dave, where Thompson is motion across the formation, just stops behind the center, takes the snap and quarterback sneak. They tried it on third and three earlier. Came up a little short, which led to a fourth down opportunity. Much more effective on third and one there. He does a good job. And now he becomes a wide receiver. At first down and 10. A very impressive drive to this point for the Cavaliers. Armstrong trying to slice inside. He'll be stacked up. Brennan Armstrong, another carry. And really eating a lot of the clock away, and that'll go for three yards. Well, eating a lot of clock away. Talk about a seven minute drive, basically, at this point. I mean, and it's been. I hated a little bit on a penalty, but it's it's really just been the ability to just continue to sustain the drive running the football. So you're just limiting the opportunities for Sam Howe and the North Carolina offense to have a response. It's a drive that began with 13.09 on the clock. And now about five and a half minutes to go on the carry at Simpson. Simpson has been a very tough customer tonight for the Cavaliers trying to knock off the number 15 team in the country and trying to snap their own four game skid. They've been talking about it all week on the Virginia side. They feel like they have played much, much better than one in four would indicate. Well, they certainly have played really well tonight. Five minutes to go. Simpson with 70 yards rushing tonight. Strong is on the move. He's going to be sacked on the play. No place to hide that time for Brennan Armstrong. And I'll tell you what, I think they were kind of flirting with disaster here with Armstrong. He was trying to get Keaton Thompson in the flat right away. It gets zoned off. There's a defender out there. He doesn't like it. He's got Chapman running right at him. And he's fortunate as Chapman kind of chopped at that football with his left arm. See Armstrong kind of cover it up at the last minute. That could have been disastrous for Virginia if he doesn't hold on to that football. So they're going to kick the field goal. Brian Delaney on from 35 yards. 
The 5'10 senior and a Virginia native gets this one up and it is good. So Virginia now on top 44 to 34 over North Carolina. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. It's presented by Geico. Happy geico Eve. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. I would have bet money most of these young kids who are now outstanding college football players were going to play college football. Just based on, you know, the facial expressions and how serious they were about Halloween. <laughs> they were getting after it as they toddlers, were. so to speak. <laughs> you said young kids. That Charles Snowden uh, froze zone <laughs> lo lo looked like it was maybe last year. <laughs> it might have been last year <laughs> at Halloween. But what an impressive drive there for Virginia. 15 plays, 58 yards. It took just over nine minutes and wound up with the field goal. 9.02 on that drive. 44 to 34, Virginia. And time running out here for North Carolina. Just over four minutes to go, Tim. Just look at playing with a lead tonight versus this season. It's kind of incredible to think about. But look, when you've lost four in a row, kind of, you know, starts to make sense. But obviously tonight a much different story. And I think the team's confidence is kind of been evident because of it. Well, Hal needs some magic. He's going to fire this one complete to Brown, who will cut to the outside and meet the contact. Deami Brown, who has had a sensational game, picks up 19 yards. You know, you think about that drive, Dave, that because it took up so much time, even though they settled for a field goal, that's better than a shorter drive that's seven points, you know, if you're Virginia just because of the possession opportunities you're going to see here. A battle for this one, and the catch is hauled in by Brown, and a flag is down. What a fight down there. The goal line and contact, all sorts of contact. Brown a little bit wobbly, kind of pulling. Defense, number one, Kelly's decline. Pass is complete. First down. Obviously declining. That penalty goes for 46 yards. If you're Virginia, you just can't let anything over the top. I mean, know the situation of the game. I think Grant allows him to do that, then interferes with him. But great job by Brown of just, you know, who cares about the pass interference? Go make the play anyway. Take the decision out of the official's hands. Powell wow, trying to scamper inside, staying on his feet, gets down to the two-yard line. Sam Howell, who does not run all that often, eventually stopped by Amos, but gets it down close here. So market at the three, and North Carolina knocking on the door with just over three minutes to go. In motion, Newsom. The handoff and straight ahead it is Williams who is in for the touchdown. I mean that just was way too easy if you're Virginia when you look at this but you know it's kind of had everything that you could use to describe North Carolina's offense the big play down the field and then when you get down in tight it's the hammer it's Javante Williams running with power good movement up front but it's Williams doing some of the work on his own, running through the tackle of Zane Zandier. And the extra point is good. 2.51 to go, 44 to 41, Virginia by three. Well, didn't you get the idea in the early seconds, if you were with us, that it might come down to this? I mean, Tim, 2.51 to go, three-point game. has been a bit of a wild Halloween night in Charlottesville. I mean, it really has, and I mean, it's been exciting. It's been plenty of offense, which has been great, but I think the explosion on offense for Virginia has been the biggest surprise, and you know, it's really been tough for North Carolina to hold up defensively. 
Well, a flag down here, but bad kick. In this situation. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. By rule, the ball is placed to the 35-yard line. First down. So off to the 35 it comes as we take a look at our big ball moment of tonight's game. Well, and I think one of the things you, you do is, is a team, when you struggle or you, you lose a football game, you look back at some of the, well, that shouldn't have happened. Well, how about the muff punt by Toe Groves? And how about the end of the half scenario where you don't come away with three, which currently is the difference in this football game? And obviously the fumble. And then North Carolina has outgained Virginia by 127 yards, but they still trail. Yet, they just answered a nine-minute field goal drive by going 75 yards in 76 seconds. That is the quarterback, Armstrong, who is down for Virginia. We're going to take the break. 2.39 to go. Left leg injury, and this is where it happened. Tough to see when he goes into the pile, but when he gets dragged down, and then moments later it has to be helped off. So Keaton Thompson will take over at quarterback for Virginia with just over two minutes to go. Second down and seven. And up by three, and he is going to run it. Well, you know he does that so well, and he also has both of the gloves on unless he's going to pass the football. <laughs> Which could be an indicator, but I would just, I would expect that they Time just out. continue to run. Time out. North Carolina. Their North first Carolina is the 32nd. Time out. Time out of that hey, two now, remaining. Sir, I need the microphone during these critical times. And Virginia, well, so do we, and Virginia... <laughs> <laughs> with all three remaining, 2.12 on the clock. Boy, it has been an entertaining night here in Charlottesville, no question about that. And tonight, after our game, join the huddle as they break down the news of the day from all of the ACC football action. The huddle coming up next on ACC Network. This will be right near the top, the result of this one. Clemson hanging on today to knock off Boston College, even though they were down 18 at halftime, able to win the game without the great Trevor Lawrence. So now Lindell Stone is also into the game. Another quarterback alongside Thompson. And Thompson will take the snap. He's going to try and bounce outside. Carolina giving chase. So 202 remaining. Thompson with the carry, and Time despite out. all of that activity, gave nothing. They're second of the half. North it's Carolina will take another. Timeout. Yeah. And I think between situation of the game and the fact that Keaton Thompson's in a quarterback, even with Lindell Stone in the backfield, you, know, you saw North Carolina basically decide to sell out to defend the run with basically no anticipation of Virginia throwing the football again situation and also because of who they have the quarterback position. Armstrong now out of the tent. And indicating to the trainers where he got hit apparently. Armstrong has had a really really impressive night. Both quarterbacks have. Sam Howell has had a sensational game. And fourth down and four. And a snap here to Thompson. Little slip there, but he stays on his feet. Still moving forward. Keaton Thompson with a spectacular play as he will pick up the first down. What a call by Bronco Mendenhall. I mean, basically, you know, on your own side of the field, and it's and what a play by Keaton Thompson. This thing's designed to go to the right, and he just decides on his own to bounce it back to the left, and 
you know, he, Bronco Mendenhall's talked a lot about Keaton Thompson is playing because he's one of our best athletes. We want the ball in his hands because good things will happen. And that's a great example of why right there on the fake punt. And Nash Griffin, the punter, was in there, but they fake it. Talapapa trying to dance outside, but they stack him up. And he will lose a yard to bring up second Time down. Out, North Carolina, their third and final of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. And the last one for Mac Brown here, 44 to 41. Virginia trying to hang on and eke out the victory and knock off the number 15 team in the country and put a giant hurt on North Carolina with the Tar Heels hoping to make a run in an ACC championship. They've already got the one loss to FSU. And on the Virginia side, you're talking about a four-game losing skid, which probably feels like, you know, 10 or 12 at this point that they are trying to snap here tonight. You're so right about that, Dave. And with everything that's going on and kind of some of the challenges with playing football and being ready and, and all of that, well, Bronco Mendenhall has been very clear that he's loved the competitive spirit of his team. In fact, told us he liked the competitive spirit of his team more this year versus Clemson and Miami than he did a year ago. So even though the record was better a year ago, it's kind of the effort, competitive spirit that he liked about his team. And the result, much different tonight. Lindell Stone taking a knee. It's so unusual to hear a head coach talk about competitive spirit for a team that is one and four, but he was very sincere about that. 44 points in this one. They're most against an AP-ranked opponent in a long time, going back to 2002. And Bronco's always been clear when we visited with him is that even though this is an out, uh, an outcome kind of oriented business and or experience in terms of the win and loss, you know, of a football game. It's the it's the process that they really are dedicated to, and their process they've they've committed to it, and it paid off tonight. You gotta love the call, and you did on fourth and three from their own 42. Thompson with a really really gutsy play goes for five, and that's how they wind up salting this one away. And that's a gutsy play, you're right, and it's probably a necessary play when you, you know, saw all throughout the night how quickly North Carolina was able to strike. And so kind of a, the calculated risk that Bronco Mendenhall took in that scenario and obviously was the right decision. There's your final score, Virginia 44, North Carolina 41, Virginia was outgained by over 100 yards in this game, but they win it nonetheless and knock off number 15, North Carolina, here tonight. Tar Heels falling to 4-2, and two, a hard-earned victory for Virginia to snap a four-game skid. They pick up their second win of the season. They've got Louisville next week. For Tim Hasselbeck and Katie George, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Have a great evening and a great weekend.